Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hacking with Friends. Today, we are doing a fan-suggested episode where we're gonna be targeting the kind of network you would expect to see at a coffee shop, or maybe a bookstore, or any sort of business that might offer Wi-Fi to customers. My name is Cody Kinsey, I'm a security researcher at Feronis, and today we're joined by Michael, the camera guy. Michael, nice tan. Oh yeah, I got a bit of the, the surfer bro, like, sunglasses tan thing going on, but yeah. Well, your your sunglasses look like cataract glasses. They had like side panels and everything <laughs> to protect you. So I mean, yes. you know, you were very well protected. Um, I, on the other hand, was indoors most of the time. I was going to say, <laughs> pale pasty hacker. Yeah, well, sometimes, uh, especially when it's 95, I just mm. don't feel like it's time to be hiking. But anyway, so we were doing a live Q&A and we kept getting a suggestion mm -hmm. and a couple of people jumped on board to talk about what you can do and what you can see on these sorts of public networks. Mm -hmm. Now these typically have the characteristic of not requiring a password and this could be a hotel Wi-Fi network, it could coffee be shop. coffee shop, and there's lots of different places where you would expect to see this sort of configuration. Um, an airplane also is one where you can expect yeah, to see this to sort of configuration. Degree. Well, no, to an exact degree, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. As a, I mean, as of, I can confirm this as of two days ago, okay. um, that on airplanes, this will work. So if you do not require a password to join the network, then mm -hmm. the content is not encrypted unless you're running a VPN. So if a normal person has just connected uh, their phone to the Wi-Fi network and it doesn't require a password, even if it does pop up a little, like, you mm -hmm. know, I agree page, that's just assigning your device a MAC address, or rather a uh, IP address on the network. It's not necessarily uh, encrypting any of your traffic. So this should work on any network that doesn't require authentication. And that's why this is pretty cool, mm -hmm. because what we're going to do today is start on the absolute outside and uh, try to work our way in and see what we can do to this network. So Michael has been courteous enough to set up a network mm -hmm. and uh, actually allow us to then start attacking it. So we are going to be singling out this network today and trying to go after it at the exclusion of all other things. And this is really what we want to emphasize. This is kind of a beginner episode on using Wireshark and a couple other programs to uh, start sniffing and attacking a network. And um, we're going to keep it relatively basic and just go over the standard things an attacker might do. But uh, if you are new to Wireshark and you have the ability to open up a uh, maybe an access point on your computer, or sorry, on your smartphone or mm -hmm. something where other devices can join uh, that's open, then you can follow along by running Wireshark. Now you will probably need a wireless network adapter mm -hmm. that's capable of being supported by Linux in order to do this. Now um, I'm using a ThinkPad, which has an internal wireless network card that is supported, but I'm actually gonna be using a Panda wireless network adapter. Um, if we switch over to my screen really briefly, um, you can see this is the one. It's currently un unavailable on Amazon. I'm sure you can buy it mm -hmm. elsewhere. But this Chip is shortage. Uh, oh, Strikes maybe. again. Yeah. So this is a um, dual band PAU uh, zero A. Um, so it's five gigahertz and two point four gigahertz. Mm -hmm. People often ask, like, oh, can this do both? Yes, this one can do both, and it's also very small. Mm -hmm. um, so you can put this into wireless monitor mode the same way you would any other Wi-Fi card. It's really nice how well this is supported. So um, I really like this. They sent it to me for free a long time ago, um, and I honestly just haven't haven't tested it for a while, but. I found it in my drawer today, tried it when I was running this, and I actually really like it. So if you can yeah, it's find- it's really tiny. Yeah, if you can find one of these, the range isn't you know really that tremendous, <laughs> but it's also incredibly discreet. So uh, yeah, I really like this. If you wanted to check it out, I, I recommend it as I've been using it all day, and I like it. Okay. So, all right. Let's set the stage a little bit for, yeah, we can go away. Um, let's set the stage a little bit for what we are going to try to do. First, we are going to lurk outside, kind of the way that Michael does. Okay. Uh, and like, you know, when hunting for the Squatch, of course. Right. Because no, yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but Michael has been was on vacation for quite a while That's hunting got, Sasquatch. That's how I got the tan. Exactly. See. So, uh, you know, you're going to lurk on the outside of a network. Mm. You're not going to be connected to the network. You're not even going to be emitting any radio emissions at all. You're going, you've gone dark. Uh, and you're just going to be listening and using the receiving side of this device. So we're going to be listening in on everything that's happening on that channel and then mm -hmm. filtering out traffic that doesn't apply to the network that we're hunting for. So this should make it pretty easy for us to see what's going on because none of these uh, Wi-Fi transmissions should be uh, encrypted whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They should just be encoded and Wireshark should do a perfectly fine job of decoding them and making them visible for us. So. Uh, we'll then move on to joining the network and seeing what we can do 
once we've joined. Now this is a little different because we will actually join the network and uh, I was just thinking, maybe I'll do a little twist. We can even disguise ourselves. So Ooh. one of the things I might do is first find out which devices are on the network, like basically mm -hmm. find Michael's uh, IP or MAC address, and then change my MAC address to match that MAC address too. Yeah. So you one thing you can do, Michael, is if you uh, go into a terminal on your computer, you mm -hmm. might be graced with the program of Mac Changer. Um, I don't know if you set up your screen, did you? I did. Okay, so uh, just... Um, is it that or is it one word? Just type Mac Changer, M-A-C-C-H-A-N-G-E-R. M-A-C-C-H-A-N-G-E-R. Okay, it's one word though. Yep, one word. So if you don't have it, then just type brew install Mac Changer. Okay. Um, so since we're doing that, why don't we go over to my, well, hold on, okay. Uh, not yet, not yet. Let me close out this other window. I just realized it's just like reading out a ton of Mac addresses. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's because it's Kismet. That's why. Well, that's cute. Um, so we'll go through Kismet in just a minute. I just don't want it on the screen. All right, go ahead and switch over to mine. Um, so. Let me say, am I misspelling Mac -chi? This is Mac Changer. You can see it on my screen. Huh. Uh, I'll make it. I'll make it real big. So. Um, Devices can lie about their MAC address, and this makes the Wi-Fi world really exciting. And in this case, we're going to infiltrate this open network by pretending to be a device that's already joined it. Mm. Now, why is this useful, Michael? Why would we ever want to do this? Um, well, if you want to obfuscate your attack, or if you want to get past a paywall. Mm. So, like, maybe it, it is an open network, but that network always uh, DNS routes you to, like, a paywall where you have to pay then if you were to spoof the MAC address and that's how they were filtering, then you could get around that. I think we have a previous live stream on that topic if you are interested. Yes, and it works and it is useful. So don't worry about that for now. Okay. Uh, just another fun thing to blur. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we are going to start this off by, um, again, lurking on the outside. Then mm -hmm. we're going to join the network and actually our device will start broadcasting. So it'll get a uh, IP address on the network, it'll be able to interact with other devices, and hopefully we'll be able to start sending spoofed ARP packets that are mm -hmm. saying, hey, I am the new center, center of the network, please send all your packets to me and I will forward them onto the router and then the router will forward it onto the internet. And that makes us uh, the man in the middle. Mm -hmm. So we will be able to start not only looking at traffic, but also diverting it and doing bad stuff to it. So we'll try using better cap to make Michael go to a different version of a website than it really exists. So uh, that should be fun. Nice. Might have to look up a little bit of documentation for better cap because it's been in a second, but that's, say, that's you know, gonna we're, we're going to do a, we're going to do uh, it live on the stream. So mm -hmm. right now um, I have two wireless cards. Um, I'll just, yeah. Do the one that I don't have to blur. There's no possible way of doing that. <clears throat> so we have two wireless cards, WLAN 0 and WLAN 1 Mon. Now WLAN 1 Mon is the um, Panda wireless card that I put into monitor mode, and mm -hmm. WLAN 0 is the built-in card um, on, in this computer, which is still in normal mode, and it is currently connected to a Wi-Fi network. So that's the condition we're starting out in. For this particular car card, all I needed to do was Airmon ng start WLAN 1. That kicked it into wireless monitor mode and I was ready to start hacking stuff. So really, really easy setup on this wireless network adapter. I've already mm -hmm. put it into wireless monitor mode, but that's literally the only command you need. So, you know, why would you? Yeah, and that's why I think we really recommend getting Alpha wireless card or a Panda wireless card because yeah. most of those are just plug and play. You don't have to fool around with installing drivers or anything like that most of the time. Yes. So right now I have a program running called Kismet. Michael, do you know what Kismet does? Um, yes. That's the one we use for like uh, war driving, wasn't it? Yeah. So Kismet is really good at war driving. And it uh, basically what it does is it takes in wireless signals and offers them up in a different kind of interface mm -hmm. than uh, I would say Wireshark does. So let's go over and we can see here's Kismet. And I filtered right here for TP Link Guest. That is the network we're going to be attacking today. And here we go. We can see lots of information about it. If I click on this, I can see, maybe can I move this? I can. There you go, Michael. Something less to blur, um, sort of. Uh, we can see information about mm -hmm. the distribution of the packet. So this tells us about the main frequency. We can see what channel it's operating on. Um, if I scroll down, then I can see 
we have uh, the signal strength, the latest signal, the max signal, so we can get some relative perspective on um, how far away the device mm -hmm. is, perhaps. And then we can also scroll down and see the packet type. So we can see management packets are pretty much empty, and data packets are kind of what we're looking for, because those are signs of life actually on the network. And to be clear, so this is an open network. You were able to just click on the network, join, and you're able to see all this. No. No. I've not oh, done oh, okay. anything. So That's at this point, the only thing I have done is I have um, put this card into wireless monitor mode, and then I've turned on Kismet and connected okay. it to the card. And I'm just starting out with Kismet because we're not really going to use it much today. I mm -hmm. just wanted to show a different way you can show all this data because this is going to help us target things a bit. And I really do love Kismet, so I want to give it so a shout out. So as far as like any security measure on the network would be concerned, like you don't exist. Yes. Um, I am not broadcasting at all. There are no mm -hmm. packets coming out of this wireless card. I'm not part of the network, and um, nobody on the network has any idea I exist. So I can see. Um, the beacons, how many I've received. Mm -hmm. I can see um, uptime, last BSS ID, uh, last probe SS ID. I can see the last beacon SS ID. So if this is um, changing its name, this is another way I could find that out. Mm -hmm. If I scroll down, we can also see advertised SS IDs, encryption, none, slash open. So that tells us, of course, we can just join mm -hmm. whenever we want. Um, and also that this is not encrypted. Um, so we can see lots of other information, uh, first seen, last seen, max rate. The, so basically, we, we can learn about the speed. So we can learn all sorts of stuff. Now, this is interesting. We can see shared hardware related to another MAC mm -hmm. address. If I click on this, we can see there's another access point here that is um, marked as shared hardware, meaning mm -hmm. it's identified this as another um, Wi-Fi network that's out there that is on being originated ah. from the same device. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I uh, clicked on AP details, I can see there's another TP link that uh, is apparently coming from the same device. Mm -hmm. um, so this allows us to track relationships. So if I go back. Yeah, because I, I think that's very common in a lot of um, you know uh, customer-oriented businesses, so like a restaurant or something like that, they'll have a public Wi-Fi available, and then the private Wi-Fi that's like for the point of sale systems and stuff like that. Yeah, and you can see which is which here. So then we can see associated clients, and this is where things get interesting. Here I can see details about all the clients that are associated to this network. So I can see we have an Apple client. So much blur. <laughs> I can see we have an unknown client. Mm -hmm. I can see we have uh, another unknown client, and then I can see we have one more. So these are our targets, basically. And these are mm -hmm. the things that are connected. And this is a, oh, actually a bridge. So this is actually um, not a client. It's a, it's a bridge. But anyway, so Kismet has showed us that, hey, there is something out here. Um, it's broadcasting on uh, channel one, it looks mm -hmm. like. And that's going to be our target today. And we even have the information we need to start filtering um, such as the name here, which I'm going to go ahead and copy because we're going to maybe even use this as our ah, we're going to maybe even use this as our first filter. I was going to say, Kismet really didn't like you trying to copy that. No, it didn't. It didn't. Maybe if I clicked it, it would just. It'll probably. Oh, <laughs> it was so ready to let me do that. I just was fighting it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shut down Kismet. Um, that that by the way did not shut down Kismet. I have to find it and kill it. Here we go. Oh, uh, it's one of those programs. Yeah. Kismet is shutting down. All right, Kismet is down. All right, so now we've shut down Kismet. That was just a peek around. Mm -hmm. What we really want to do is start scanning um, and see what we can look at in Wireshark. So uh, we've already put the card into wireless monitor mode. Um, so what, or I already put the card in wireless monitor mode. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is arrow dump ng. And um, actually, I'm going to do dash dash help because oh, I want to see all the different. Because you're a script kitty that needs no, help. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, you are very rude. Um, no, because I want to use a filter to prevent you from needing to blur. But now that you mention it, let's go wild. Let's no, just... no, no. It's all oh, right. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I'm that's sorry. what I thought. All right. So by using this ESSID filter, then we can make it so we don't see anything except the thing that you don't want to blur. So. Um, Let's do arrow dump ng dash ch1, or dash, is it dash c1? Yeah, it should be dash c1. Um, and then dash c, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's mm -hmm. dash c. And then uh, dash e ssid, or is it dash dash? 
Okay, and so essentially what this is going to do is it's going to only show us this access point based on the MAC address. Based on the, no, based on the network Oh, name. the name. Okay. Let's try it. No interface selected. Oh, that's important. Um, so WLAN11 is the interface. Nice. Boom. Okay, look, hey. TP Link Desk. And we can see there's some stuff that's connected to it. Mm -hmm. um, we're probing for it. So, okay, cool. So that is the first step of what we want to see. Now, I'm going to go ahead and then open up a new window and uh, call Wireshark. Now, Wireshark is going to go ahead. I'm going to open this. I feel like Jaws theme music needs to play every time you open Wireshark. Very spooky. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just so, uh, let's see. So right now, we're getting a bunch of packets. And we can see, I'm going to I'm going to just not be at the bottom of them. Mm -hmm. um, we can see sort of what they are. So this is a data packet. We're looking for beacons. So I'm going to click on a beacon frame. And if I scroll over here, I can see um, TP-Link. That's not what we mm -hmm. want. TP-Link guest. This is what we want. And, and so for people that might not know, what is a beacon frame? A beacon frame is an advertisement for a network saying, okay. hey, I'm a network nearby. In fact, if I click on this, if I double click on this, then I can break out some of these properties, and mm -hmm. I can see, OK, so um, this was received on interface WLAN 1.1. Great. Um, we can see radio tap header, information about what channel it was on. We can see it was on channel frequency 1. Um, we can see radio information, uh, signal strength. So we can see mm -hmm. more information about the frequency. IEEE, -E -E. we can see it's a beacon frame, and then frame control field. This is where we can start to see more information about the actual like transmitter source, um, and then information, wireless management. So under tag mm -hmm. parameters, it gives us the network name. It tells us the supported bit, like data mm -hmm. rates. Um, it'll say the current channel. Uh, this is all the critical information necessary for joining the network. And that is pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. You can see some vendor-specific tags, Microsoft, like Broadcom. So this tells us, like, OK, um, it's uh, associated with Microsoft in some mm -hmm. way. There's a Broadcom chip running here. Um, it really tells us just what we need to know in order to join the network. So that's very, very useful. And we can pivot off of it, most importantly. So here, I'm going to take the source address, which is where this beacon mm -hmm. came from, right mouse click it, and apply as filter, selected, and then close this. So now um, you are familiar with my, my filter flip mm -hmm. that I do. So why do we need to apply this filter if we already did the ESSID um, filter? OK, so there's two different types of filters. There's display filters and capture filters. Mm -hmm. If you run a um, display filter, it will show you uh, what you asked for. Uh, but still capture everything. Okay. If you do a capture filter, it will only capture things you specify. I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe we have, have specified a um, display filter. So mm -hmm. it's still capturing everything, and Wireshark will still see everything, even though we've written a filter into arrow dump ng, which is uh, preventing it from dumping to the screen um, pack, basically okay. the networks we don't want to see. So Michael can blur less. Yes. Um, so, but it's not a, a capture filter. Although mm -hmm. we can make a capture filter in Wireshark, so it only receives packets Ooh. from a specific network. But it's a totally, totally different mm -hmm. uh, formatting than the display filters, which is really weird. Yeah, I don't know if we want to go off on a tangent, but that is an interesting point when you're doing, um, you know, ethical Wi-Fi hacking. How do you make sure you're not accidentally eavesdropping on networks that you don't have permission? Well, if they are, uh, well, at least in the United States, if they are not using encryption, then you have permission. Interesting. Um, so we specified something different than usual. Mm -hmm. It's either, uh, this is EA. So DA, so it would be TA. So transmitter address, I think that this should be fine. I just need to change this. I was trying to be fancy. There we go. Let's see if that works. So we should now see things where the source or the destination. Mm -hmm. um, there we go, yeah. So we see some different ones um, are this address. And that means that we can see, basically, we should be able to see the entire conversation. Um, so I'm just, I, I prefer destination and transmitter. That's just how I like to do it. So this is my filter. Um, you can modify it as, as you want. But basically, you just need to find a beacon frame from mm -hmm. the network you want to monitor. And then right mouse click it. 
um, select the destination as one filter and then make the and, uh, mm -hmm. that's these uh, two pipes here, and then um, the transmitter address as well. So you can find uh, things that were sent to and from, um, which is what we want. So if you if you mess up this filter, your first sign that will be will be that the source is always the same and it never mm -hmm. changes. And of course, I might have messed up this filter. I'm doing this very I, fast. I was going to say if the are the two vertical pipes and or are they or? Because I thought double and was and. No, if you do double and, then it's required both, and that should hit on nothing. Ah, see, so because there's no packets that were both sent um, to and from. Yeah, like, okay. yeah, the same address. So so double pipe would then be or. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, wait, these addresses are different. <gasps> okay, the plot cool. thickens. Yeah, wait, why is that? Okay, well, whatever. Let's go ahead and. Hold up. No, they're this. not different. EA, DA. The, oh, because you were typing yeah, yeah. destination yeah. address. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix the filter. So I just need to reacquire a TP link guest beacon right here. And then it's just the same thing again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that small. I'm going to make this small. How to make this small. Uh, we need to find the source and the destination. I just want to collapse these again so you can see it from this right. perspective. All right, so you need to see um, the transmitter address. Apply as filter. Selected. There we go. Copy. Paste. And then you want to edit the TA. DA. Yes. There we go. Okay. Okay, let's see if this works. All right. Yeah. So now if I scroll down, we can see sometimes it's not always the exact same MAC address, which is good. Mm -hmm. That gives me hope. Um, what we should also be seeing is uh, different types of packets aside from just the beacon frames. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to start doing something else, I could also, let me, I'm going to actually, if we want to save a filter, ah, no. No, 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 don't do that. There. Um, I'm going to copy this, but I'm also going to click here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to save this filter. And I'm going to save it as, oh, wait, it's at the bottom. Um, Michael. I don't know why. You're sitting next to me, so that's why. Nice. Uh, and I'm just going to paste it so I know it's the same. OK, yes, it is. All right, so now we have this saved, and we can start adding stuff onto it. So let's say I don't want to see beacon frames anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, frankly, like they were helpful at first, but we need to get rid of these. So how do we get rid of something? Well, all right, there's a couple different things we can do. And typically, I like to just identify this by any um, identifier, like mm -hmm. beacon frame. There we go. By right mouse click this, apply as filter, selected. Then we've got a new filter for beacon frames. But that's not what we want. So I can, oops. Put the old filter, and then uh, basically remove it. So actually, now I need to remember how to do that, because it's been a second. So now we're getting into Wireshark filters. I might have to. This is turning into Wireshark basics. Yeah, it is. And I'm sure there will be huge blurs right now. Meh. Uh, Wireshark filter remove. Pro tip, kids, anytime you have a question, Stack Overflow knows the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Filter out a string using a display filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want. So this is how I like Wireshark filters are so specific. Um, and the community is generally pretty good at just like showing mm. you how to do them. This uh, thread isn't. But uh, here we go. A big list of Wireshark display filters. Thank you so much. Um, so we can see all sorts of different types of things that will allow us to see um, oh. associations, Subtype. disassociations. Um, so right now, since we have this core thing, we can mm. say what we want in. Uh, so I'm going to skirt around forgetting how to omit. And instead, let's say that I want to see any uh, authentications, any devices that have joined. Okay. So if I copy this and then go back to Wireshark, let's just add onto our filter. So rather than that, I'm going to say and. Is a subtype. Let's see if we have anything. And um, just to check, I'm going to go ahead and join it and see if we capture anything. Um, if I'm not already joined. Uh, do, do, do. Let's go ahead and 
TP-Link guest. There we go. Hey. Look at that. We got an authentication. That's pretty so, cool. So what are we doing? We're filtering for uh, only traffic coming mm -hmm. to or from this uh, suspicious network or this guest network or whatever we're going after. And we're trying to be able to look at specific types of packets. Um, Oops. And so is this the method by which you're able to track what devices are connected to which network? Or yes. So uh, right now I can tell any device that authenticates, I can see that immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I can also go through and see um, more information about um, like specific conversations between devices, like mm -hmm. which ones are connected. So uh, I, I'm just going through these. These are all such useful. Um, things because let's say we want to see data frames. Which which devices are actually sending data on this network? Well, mm -hmm. we just add to our filter. We'll just replace this one. This filter is becoming huge. There we go. That space is unnecessary. Let's see. Okay, so these are all data frames. Oh. So now we filtered so we can see any devices uh, on the network. We can see their IP address, actually. And so actually. if they were going to like an HTTP website, we would be able to see the content of that? Potentially, yes. So let me go to um, your favorite website in the world. Let's see what happens. Um, oh, it wasn't tracking it live. I was hoping it. Oh, there we go. Look, ah, oh, man. Do you see all that stuff that happened? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't going to the bot. OK, here we go. I'm going to try it again. Are we I'll all go to a here? different. Um, if you just refresh the page, or it might cache it. Yeah, it cached it. Uh, I just want to go to all right, different page. There. So you can see a bunch of HTTP requests. Mm -hmm. um, we're, getting, we're getting some interesting stuff. If I right mouse click on this SSDP, I can right mouse click and click follow UDP stream, and it'll try to piece it together and see if there's any useful information here. And in this case, oh. it looks like there's lots of useful information because uh, this is just plain text HTTP. So going three, uh, we can see uh, just information about what's being exchanged here, Wi-Fi Alliance, schema, blah, 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 blah. Nothing really like super interesting, but it's mm -hmm. all in plain text. So we can just follow it, and it will construct this filter as we go. That's um, a little spooky. Yeah, I don't really want to. I mean, to there's know. a reason you want to use a VPN when you're on an open network like this. I think this is a prime example of why. Yes. Um, so I'll put this filter back. And then let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look at um, ARP requests. So I can do um, and. And so uh, for people that may not be familiar, what's an ARP request? Address resolution protocol. It basically means if you wanted to do a survey of all the devices on this network, mm -hmm. instead of doing an ARP scan, we could go ahead and listen in on devices naturally kind of checking in okay. and asking who else is there. Um, and this should give us most of the devices on mm -hmm. the network. We can see here, it's just a series of different devices asking each other who's where and who's what, um, which is great. This allows us to learn uh, kind of more information about which devices are um, on the network uh, mm -hmm. itself. So then we can do something like DNS. What is this useful for, Michael? Um, so DNS is used for resolving between like a URL name and the IP address of the website, but uh, you could potentially spoof DNS queries if you are. It's too much. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yes. So DNS is the address book of the internet. It basically will look up a website and tell you what the IP address is. So Michael, I want you on your computer, which is connected here, mm -hmm. um, to go to five different websites, and we're going to try to intercept this in real time. OK, <laughs> OK. And we're going to try to tell which five websites Michael's going to. Um, OK. Now I have to come up with random websites that are all. Just go to, come on. I'm going, I'm going to websites. Come on. I'm not getting anything. Uh, uh, I'm connected to TP-Link Guest, and mm. I am going to websites. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Um, so let me try. Um, I'm going to try to go to hmm. <laughs> well, all right. So theoretically, we should only be seeing requests. So let's see if if we omit this part of the filter, if we can just see DNS requests.
So okay, are you seeing them now? Um, so one thing that might be necessary is actually, uh, well, no, it shouldn't be. I was going to say disconnecting, reconnecting to the network. Um, right now, it's showing zero DNS packets, which is a little unusual because we're seeing HTTP packets. Uh, yeah. So let me try HTTP. It's interesting we're able to like reconstruct them, but it's not coming up exactly as HTTP. Because um, I did go to, uh, so let's go ahead. If we want to just get rid of this and then do a search, mm -hmm. another thing we can try is actually just doing a search and seeing if we can hit on uh, current filter. No, no, no current filter. Yeah. Um, a string, Dougal. My Dougal. Find. Find my Dougal. OK, first, stop tracking every packet. And instead, find my Dougal. It's, it's, oh, I think it's still processing. Because it's I, processing because there's a lot of data. Yeah, there's yeah. like that little bar in the bottom middle. Yeah, oops. OK, I unleash a lot of data on it. Oopsies. It's going, it's going. But all right, hopefully we'll be able to. So again, what we're doing is we're going through all mm -hmm. these packets. We're looking for, um, in the packet details, any information related to um, you know, Dougal. No packet contained that string. What? OK, so then we'll go into the packet bytes. And if it's not there, then it's really not there. No packet contained that string in its converted data. What? All right. So let me, um, we are capturing on the correct network. I can confirm that because I can see TP link guest. Uh, so let me see if I can maybe stop the capture and restart it. Mm -hmm. Just so we have less data that we're working with, continue without saving. Whoa, and it just died. Wireshark. You get you fed it too much. Let's bring it back. Yeah, it seems like it was getting a little bit weird. Okay. Um, okay. Kind of feel like we're testing this wireless network adapter now. Um, all right, all right, all right. So we're gonna go back to our filter. Do do do. That should be fine. And then we'll do and. DNS. So right now we see nothing. I'm going to go ahead and join the network. TP I'm going guest. to random websites. OK, confirmed on, on 2.4 gigahertz. And then doing some requests. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. So let me just strip this so I'm just looking for DNS. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, since we're not getting anything, I guess it's time to get more serious. So uh, usually on a password protected network, mm -hmm. you have to like basically disconnect and reconnect or have someone do that in order to see the traffic. Oh, yeah. On this sort of network, there's absolutely no reason it shouldn't be working other than perhaps the wireless network adapter moving to another channel, which doesn't yeah. seem super. And, and currently, we're still outside of the network. We're not even connected to the network. Right, right, right. We're currently outside the network. Um, 2.4 gigahertz, but it doesn't tell me the channel because like Android doesn't trust you mm -hmm. with that information. Uh, all right, all right. Well, that's very, very helpful. Um, let's go ahead and um, one, let's go ahead and join the network and start getting more serious. So okay. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and change my network over to this. And hopefully we'll see an authentication. That doesn't it doesn't let me do shorthand name. It wants me to do the whole filter. This is why like sometimes Wireshark is tedious to work with because you know yeah. exactly what you want. But um, then you have to look up a long formula uh, to put in. Well, it's not a long formula. It's just this. But like yeah. all control frames, authentications, disassociations, probe request, actions, association, response. You may uh, not call that a long formula, but I would say that's less than intuitive. Um, I'm gonna do uh, associations. Or, uh, which which ones should I do? Which ones should I do, Michael? 
Um, you should do six. Okay, I'll do zero. <laughs> I don't even see six. On yeah, it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just try this and see if we get one. Do we see any devices joining? Okay, we see, yes, we see a device trying to join. Okay, well, that's mm -hmm. kind of encouraging. Um, not fully encouraging because it still isn't really working. I'm going to disconnect. And then I'm going to see if I can generate one by connecting just to kind of troubleshoot mm -hmm. this. Okay, yeah, there we go. So we see an association request. So then let's go ahead and do. Um, Another website, maybe? Another website. Um, so I'm going to do. I'm doing oh, yeah. random websites. No, I need you to kill the whole filter. OK, for whatever weird reason, we suddenly have this. Um, so one reason is we could um, only be receiving packets from our local computer. Mm -hmm. There's the possibility that for whatever reason, it's just not showing DNS requests that are coming from external. But we have a way of fixing that. So let's go ahead and make ourselves the center of the network, because I am very bored of this not working. And I want to start seeing other stuff that other people are doing. So um, Michael, go ahead and go to, um, I don't know, like Google, mydoogle.com. Google, my OK. Let's see if we can currently see what you're up to. Oh, I did .co. OK, well, I still didn't see any DNS requests. So that means that it looks like we're not getting it. So we've now joined the network. And what we can do is we can start to take over the network as well. So I'm going to go back over here. OK. I went Oops. to my Google. OK, good. Well, I didn't see it. Um, so I'm going to go, I can see over in Wireshark, standard query search. Or did I see it? Nope. Doesn't look like any Doogles to me. So let's go ahead and first we'll do better cap dash H. I'm going to make this a little smaller. So it's going to ask for the interface to bind to. We're going to do um, WLAN 0. So mm -hmm. better cap. No, is it possible to use multiple of these programs with the same Wi-Fi chip? I think things will get confusing. Yeah. Uh, OK, so we have all the stuff that's not running. So that's a let's, lot of red. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start some of the network stuff. Uh, net.probe start, net.probe on. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, then look again. All right, now we got a couple. We'll do net.sniff on. And then we'll also do um, arp.spoof. OK, so all these things together should start probing targets mm -hmm. and um, otherwise making it so we are the center of the traffic that's happening here. So uh, if I want to, I can also go back into Wireshark and switch my source over. So right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and press Stop. I'm going to go to the little wheel. And then we're going to select WLAN 0 as our new source, and then Start. Continue without saving. And all right, so we now have um, ARP spoofing turned on. We should be also, if I type in ARP. So we're the center of the network now. Um, we can see there's a ton of our packets going out. There's lots of our packets happening. And that is because of us. We are telling mm -hmm. everyone that we are the center of the network over and over and over again forever. So that's great. So we'll do net.show. And we can see there's a couple different devices here. And we're going to try to start tricking them um, into uh, doing stuff. So Michael, let's go, have, go ahead and go to a couple other um, websites. And let's see if now we might be able to see something. I'm very frustrated. So I'm going to go <laughs> um, DNS. And I'm going to go, uh, is that as far down as it goes? No, it's not. I'm going to click on Follow the Live View. So um, I've gone to several websites. Yes, I need you to keep doing that. That's the general okay. idea. So I'm also going to join. It seems to be. 
OK, I've joined. I keep seeing failed to connect to network, which is not super encouraging. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm on TP Link Guest and going to websites and stuff. Yep. So we can see here that we're still mostly just seeing queries from google.com, play.google.com. Really oh, here we go. docs.google.com, um, fonts, Google API. Let me see if I'm actually, and these are, some of these are coming from different IP addresses. So let me see if I can open like an app. I'm just curious to see if there's anything longdodgechallenge.com. Yes. OK, okay. we're finally now getting it. Now you're seeing my website. OK, uh, the zen.zone. Yes. OK, all right, all right, finally. So Random color. what's happening here? Well, basically, my computer has finally successfully convinced Michael's computer that oh, we can see facebook.com. Um, yeah, so it has basically finally convinced Michael's computer uh, that uh, when it needs to go to ihasabucket.com, uh, um, that it should go to my computer. I can see buryme-with-money.com, um, safebrowsing.google.com. OK, that's enough of that. So all right, that was a little bit that was a little bit frustrating. But here, what ended up happening was when I couldn't, when for whatever reason, I wasn't able to capture network traffic. And again, I think it might be this little wireless network conductor. Like, oh, I mean, it's, it's cute, shoddy. it's great. But well, it's not, I'm not going to say it's shoddy. But um, I have used other ones that are a little bit more stable. And we weren't doing anything with two point or with uh, five gigahertz today. So. You know, whatever. I'm not going to blame it totally on that, but it was very stressful for a minute mm -hmm. there. So now we're intercepting everything, and I should be able to do HTTP, and we can see burymewithmoney.com, blah blah blah. Images, bury money. Do you need me it to looks go to like, more? It looks like we can actually maybe even. Um, some of those should maybe be HTTP. They're yeah, just so, like random ones. So let's say, let's go ahead and uh, export objects. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Let me write this book that's on. Um, I just went to a um, HTTP website. HTTP stream. So we can see buryme-with-money.com, and it's like getting an image. File, export packet dissections, no export objects. Hmm, it's not giving me the option to. Oh, it's because I'm not stopped yet. OK, let me stop. Maybe it'll do it then. File, um, export objects, HTTP. And then um, we have a couple of different things that we can export. We can see OCP requests. Um, so I was hoping that I would find images, um, um, because frequently that's what we find. There's one I went to recently, NinjaFlex. Oh, hold on. I, I would have to start it again, because I stopped oh, okay. the capture. But let me um, continue without saving. Sorry, go ahead to your, to your NinjaFlex or whatever. Um, gonna... OK, I will refresh that one. There's a couple of them that are. NinjaFlex, there's one that's really long URL. Um, OK, there's another one. Are you seeing those? Nope, not yet. Oh. Mm. But if I go over to BetterCat, let's see if we can do the final part of our plan. Um, since everything's going so, oh, no, never mind. I can see NinjaFlex.com, um, liqueur, liqueur. Um, so I can see these get requests. Yeah, again. OK. Um, so, oh, if anyone is wondering how I'm getting all these random websites, it's theuselessweb.com. So, okay, if you need help uh, with any of these, you can type help and then whatever the module is. I can see DNS spoof is currently not running. But if I want to do this, then it gives me pretty much instructions what I need to do mm -hmm. here. Ah, oh my god, oh my god, it wants to do, go to all these things so badly. So we can do DNS spoof on um, and then DNS spoof off. But we also need to specify some, par some parameters. So DNS spoof address, um, so the IP address to map the, mm -hmm. the domains to, um, and then DNS spoof all. Um, uh, this will spoof basically everything. So anything that they try to go to will uh, <laughs> just go there. So if I just do DNS spoof address and map the domain to something, um, then I believe we can just take it to uh, you know something obnoxious. So uh, do I want to go through, through the trouble of hosting something myself? No, I don't. Um, do you, it usually wants an IP address, though. So um, hmm, default interface address. 
So we need to supply it with something because we need to reroute things to somewhere. Oh, so we need a fake website to go to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I believe in the past we have resurrected Cat Fancy. Yes, I know, with a Python, Python server, which I don't want to create right now. Um, we are pretty close to that. We have 15. Tennis boot domains. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, no, those are domains of spoof. Could um, you just redirect me to a website? No, that's what I'm saying. Sorry. Okay. Um, this only takes IP addresses. Does that make sense? Not domains. They're different. Right. So you need the IP address of a website. Right. But it's a little more complex. I mean, so basically, um, if you, I mean. I think there's web tools to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the problem. So if I just do paying, um, what, mydoogle.com, mm -hmm. it's going to give me an IP address. But then if I take this IP address and put it in the browser, like what do you think is going to happen? Um, should, should it work? I think sometimes it might work. It might not work. See? Hmm. Site not installed. Um, so if I specify like port 80, I guess, like whatever, like I'll still get this like, you know, oh. it hates it. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, you need the domain to point within the IP address to where it's supposed to go. You you can't just like specify this. Do you but, need to specify the port eighty eighty? Um, or eighty? No, no. It's already by default specifies port eighty. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that the when accessing it, you need to specify which domain to go to. Otherwise, it won't go. So for now, I'm just gonna like make it go to this site not installed. I'm gonna make mm -hmm. it look like the whole internet's down, just because I don't want to pop up. The internet is broken. Yeah, I don't want. Yes, I don't want to pop up my own phishing page. So yeah. let's do DNS. It's for demonstration purposes only. Spoof. Dot address. At least it resolves to something. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I'm just going to do this one. And I'm going to get rid of the HTTP stuff. Yeah, who needs protection? Mm, error, invalid. Do you want it equals? Oh my god, don't make me do this. Does it want like an equal space? Mm, well, I mean, no, it doesn't. It doesn't mm. seem like equals at all. Um, Maybe it wants a colon. Do you want a colon? Is that what you want, you stupid thing? Double equals. Oh, right. OK, well, I did type help for the help menu. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't give me uh, do, 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 default equals. Yeah, OK, whatever. I'm just going to Google it. <laughs> no shame here. Yeah. Uh, for, I mean, it's not my fault if someone writes something that's not very intuitive. So here we go. DNS move on, DNS move off. Okay, wonderful. DN um, DNS spoof domains. I don't care. DNS spoof address. Uh, interface address. IP address to map the domains to. I literally just gave that to you. Uh, examples. Yes, please. Oh my gosh. Uh, set DNS spoof uh, example.com. Set DNS spoof address. Oh, you want the whole thing like this? That's so dumb. Uh, so we're going to just mm. copy and paste this because it wants me to do it in its like dumb parlance. Blah, blah, blah. I'm using the best text editor here. <laughs> yes. We're going to set it to all. We're going to set it to um, whatever, the ha uh, whatever the hell we had over here. Mm -hmm. So this one. And then... And we so we could be spoofing any arbitrary URL. We are we should be spoofing all. Oh, all URLs. URLs. Yeah, I set it to all. So okay. let's see if that works. So I'm going to copy that. So we can do dns.spoof dot all. Oh, no wait. So it's uh, dns.spoof dot all. That's the correct syntax. Okay, cool. Copy. Let's see, this all right, is let's a magic try it. Moment. So much text to express this. Let's do it. Unknown syntax. Set DNS spoof all. Type help. <laughs> we, yeah. Does it just not understand all? Um. DNS spoof dot domains. Maybe you need the dot domains and then 
Yeah. Oh wait, set. Yes. Oh yes! That Victory. was so exhausting. You exhaust me, better cap. DNS spoof on, fool. I've given you the instructions. Ugh. All right, so okay. finally, with a little bit of effort, we are now spoofing all DNS requests. And wait, 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 wait. I want to go over to Wireshark and hopefully capture this after the cluster we've just had. <laughs> okay. So, all right, so go ahead and try to go to mydoogle.com. Go ahead, I dare you. Okay, I'm just going to. You're already at mydoogle.com. Stop refreshing. Okay. That's not a new DNS request. Okay, go to. Um, a random website? Yeah, a random website. I successfully got to a random website. I'm not seeing. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Try harder. I open a maybe open a new tab, huh? Yeah, I'm opening a new tab. Maybe open a new window. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my internet seems to be working fine. So I can see requests from mydoogle.com. I doogle my doogle my doogle. Um, and so it's all going through here. Uh, and let me double check. Let me see if I try to just go to an IP address. What? Will it actually work? What? No, don't. Well, okay. don't do that because that wouldn't go through DNS. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Still sniffing. I'm gonna type. I need you to keep going to websites. That's okay. That, that okay, I change. will keep going. Through yes, please websites. keep doing that. Um, so I can see ARP spoofing is running. I can see um, DNS spoofing is running. Good. So this is all the stuff that should be required to do basic mm -hmm. DNS spoofing. Um, and I can see this stuff is happening. In Wireshark, I don't see um, any of the queries. I'm gonna go ahead and start and stop it again. Continue without saving. When all else fails, turn it off and on again. Yeah, why not? Okay, now I see some DNS requests. Um, but go ahead and keep going to keep going okay. to websites. I'm going to websites. Mm -hmm. And I see no such uh, standard query response, no such name, no such name. I'm sure there's like some simple mistake that we're making. No, I mean this is uh, I've constantly complained about doing wireless stuff. Um, so we can see a couple of the websites he's going to, but seems like the DNS spoofing isn't quite working. So I'm going to um, stop it, dns.spoof off, and then I'm going to respecify. So um, help DNS spoof. Uh, let's say that I want to say DNS spoof domains. Set DNS post spoof domains yeah. to um, mydoogle.com. Let's try setting it specific. And then um, we'll do DNS spoof on. OK, so now we're running again. So now I need you to specifically, in a new incognitous window, try to go to mydoogle.com. OK, we'll open. New private window? Yeah, that's fine. What's interesting is, is it's clearly sniffing the request. Yeah, I'm getting through to the website. Oh, one problem. Uh, let me set uh, help dns.spoof. Set dns spoof address. Oh, yeah. One, 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 one. So now I'm just going to like crash it. OK. I think 1.1.1 will actually resolve to um, whatever. the Cloudflare DNS website. That would be a sneaky way to tell people that they need to get. Uh, OK, try it. Let's try it again. Okay, so new. So, now, so we're just trying window. to. Yeah, so we're just trying to like zero in on this. It, clearly, we're able to sniff it. Damn, yeah. Seems like yeah. Uh, seems like this method is being a little bit unreliable. Of course, there's some other things that could be happening. Not totally sure what exactly it is, but mm -hmm. we are. Yeah, I can see like other traffic coming from Michael's computer, although I can't actually see uh, your Google request. Yeah, but really the focus of this live stream is more on the vulnerabilities of uh, these open networks, right? So 
the kinds of things that you would be able to do on an open network, see all the devices connected to it, see any unencrypted traffic without connecting. If you did connect, then you could DNS spoof or do some other kind of man-in-the-middle attack with ARP spoofing. Um, is there anything else that we haven't really talked about? That uh, Yes, everything that didn't work. Hmm. So I'm navigating my phone, and I can see, yeah, no, it doesn't seem to, uh, even though I'm absolutely using this network, it doesn't seem to register it. So I think this is probably something with the way the network's set up, um, mm -hmm. s the way that the network is set up. Like, the this particular guest setting seems to be either limiting or somewhat disrupting the way this is able to um, actually intercept the packets. So mm -hmm. that's a little bit confusing because this uh, that usually actually, works just fine. Because I'm not able in the guest network to actually go to the um, router admin page either, which is really interesting. Um, so I guess our TP link router is out securing, out security, I guess? No, it's not. It's just broken. Mm. Our demo network that we created for you guys. So if we were um, doing this on like a regular network that mm -hmm. wasn't um, like a very old router that's configured with guest settings that are like somewhat locked down but somewhat mm -hmm. not, then we would be getting a lot more here, and it would be more consistent. Unfortunately, um, yeah, it's not doing that. So you can see in general the broad stro strokes here of what we would go through. We were able to capture the DNS request. We were able to reconstruct some of the websites that we were going to, but seems like BetterCap wasn't able to actually redirect anyone to anything. So um, I didn't write better cap. Doesn't, doesn't bother me. But uh, yeah, it is a little bit weird that on an open network you wouldn't be able to because typically you're able to just mm -hmm. grab control of the network. And if I type help, then you can see that, yep, uh, we have everything. Uh, we have everything running here. Oh, we have, uh, uh, stop it. We have DNS spoofing running. We have ARP spoofing running. All this stuff should be what we need in order to get this done. But for whatever reason, it is not. So hmm. if you are a BetterCap expert and you would like to defend BetterCap against its performance here, then please explain to me. Explain to me what we did wrong. I dare you. But if not, then uh, typically this would work. It's just I think we're dealing with a, a router that's not quite set up properly. So, okay, that's all we have to show today. Uh, if you want to check in on some of the other Wireshark basics we've done, then you can get a good understanding of how to do this same thing mm -hmm. only with uh, password-protected wireless networks, which I definitely recommend checking out. And some of the Wireshark filters we did today were just kind of on the fly by taking characteristics and using them with a simple formula. And maybe mm -hmm. I'll do another stream on just constructing some of these basic Wireshark filters because they're a lot of fun and make slicing through the data pretty easy. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, hopefully this will work a little bit better next time. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.